So what's the best option if you want to design something and print it as quickly as possible? What could you possibly design? And the answer is vase. Uh, there's a lot of options to go with, but if you're using Fusion 360, you can start pretty quickly. You come in here and click this little form button, and it'll drop you into sculpt mode. I like to go and go to the top. You can drop in a circle whatever size you're looking for. I'm just going to say 60 millimeters. From there, if you just want to go with a nice round vase, you can just extrude that out. Once you have the circle, you can just extrude that up a bit. So you go to Create and Extrude. Select that circle. I'm going to rotate the angle so I can see a little bit. And in this case, I'm going to go up about 20 millimeters. From there, we go into the modify option. We'll click on modify and you'll want to change the selection filter to the edge and that should be the only thing you need to change. If you do a fast double click you'll select the entire edge. If you hold down the alt key while raising it you'll create a new section. Now, if you don't hold down the alt key you'll just keep adjusting that section. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key several times to create a few different sections. And we've created a tower. Now that doesn't look very interesting to start with, but let's start with it, see what we get going. So I've selected the bottom, and each of these changes something slightly. The center part allows you to create a bulge or to shrink. as you can see by moving the mouse. Actually looks like a wormhole like that, but let's just go ahead and shrink that down a little. I'm going to go to the next one. Form that like that. Double click the next. Go ahead and start a bulge right there. A bit more of the bulge there. Go to the next and start shrinking that down until it looks like the type of vase you're looking for. And there you go. In a few seconds, a vase has been created. Now there's one minor issue, it has no bottom, but we can take care of that pretty quickly. So when you have the vase looking like what you would like, Go ahead and flip it over, come in, and select Fill Hole. You'll double click this base part, and you see it rounds over the edge. That doesn't work very well for a vase because there's no way for the vase to actually sit. So if you click Maintain Crease Edges, it'll flatten that out, and you'll have a vase that actually sits. You can actually change these as well and it's a slightly different fill pattern. It will ultimately print the same the majority of the time. Uh, once you've filled it, if you click OK, you cannot unfill the hole from what I've found. I could be wrong, and if somebody knows how, please let me know, because there have been several where it would have been nice to be able to go back and unfill that hole to make a change. But as it is now, we can go ahead and take this. You'd go through your normal process of 3D print, highlighting everything, and then you can save it. Now you notice the error that came up and it said an issue with the T-spline has to be converted. So what did I do wrong? Nothing really. You just need to go in and finish the form. It'll turn this into a vase, as you can see. And now you can go in, go through your normal process of selecting it, and then saving this out. So what do you do if you want something a little different instead of just a smooth vase? Well, let's see what we can do. Let's say you're looking for something slightly different that isn't just a round vase. So let's go ahead and start again by creating a form. Uh, again, I'll go from the top view. I'll use C to create a circle, just to give me a basis for wrap what, just so that I know where round is when it comes to the design. 
I'm going to open the spline on the sketch, zoom in a bit, and just make a few little points, something like that or so. And we'll close that spline up. So this needs to be rotated around, and that's easy. Just go into your sketch, circular pattern, select the pattern you just created, select your center point, and then I'm going to increase this to about 30, which is pretty close. And then bump that up until the points touch. And that looks like about right. I'm going to click OK. Zoom in. And I've got a little bit of space in between those. So I'm going to grab one and let it connect. And then take a look to make sure they all connected. Okay, so once we have that design, we will go ahead and select Extrude again, rotate that so that I can see it a bit better, and pull that up. And then stop there. Now since we want more than just a ring, we'll go into Modify again, make sure you have that edge selected, double click that, and we'll start making some copies by holding the Alt key when you click. Okay, so I did a few of those. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and choose Modify and shrink that by quite a bit. Let's go back a little. There we go. Go to the next one. Shrink that down some more. You're probably thinking, what do these other options do? Well, this makes it shake back and forth. This pulls forward and back. This raises and lowers, and these you can dance around. So you have the ability to fully move the design in any position you want. Peter's being a little stubborn right now. There we go. There's something different. And actually, let me pull this one out. Oh, I selected just the one. Make sure I select everything. And layer that a little. Actually, let's pull it in. That's what's nice about this is you can just change your mind. And if you decide to add another, Hit the Alt key, pull it up, and you just created another. There we go. That's what I was looking for. You have this design. Now, if you want to do something completely different, you can select this. Make sure you get all of them again. And you have this little option here on the side that allows you to rotate. You can actually go in. Put a little spiral on your whole design. Or just sections of it. You can also come in and if you only want to modify a few of these, you could do this and pull this out. That would allow you to actually create a spout or a pouring vase, or whatever you would like. And it gives a lot of options. Let's go ahead and back that one off. 
there and save that. And then we'll close it up like we did the last time. So I'm going to flip it over, fill hole, select the bottom. And once you've selected your crease edges, it generally stays there. So that's done. And then this can be switched out of form view. And I'm sorry, out of sculpt view and back into model. And you can save this to print it. So what slicer settings are you supposed to use when you print a face? Well, like most everything in 3D printing, that has a lot to do with the printer you're using. In my case, I'm using the WinHow i3 Plus and the various clones that are pretty much identical to it, uh, including the Maker Select Plus and the like. I do like to use T-Glass for vases. Uh, that or PET-G. Uh, they can both hold water fairly well if they're printed properly and it's all calibrated. I use a standard 0.2 layer height. Uh, do a wall thickness. None of the wall thickness really matters except for the bottom layer. That will actually determine how many layers you have on the bottom. After that, since you have the spiralize outer contour or the vase mode option selected, it will only create a single continuous line spiraling up the entire vase. And in my case, with a Micro Swiss all metal upgrade for the extruder, I use a temperature of 240 degrees for T glass, uh, build plate temp of 50 degrees, and I do a flow of 150%. Now that might seem like a lot of over extrusion, but it helps bond very well in vase mode, and you come out with a very nice looking vase. Uh, since this is Micro Swiss, the retraction is below one millimeter to keep it from clogging. I've slowed the prints down to about 40 millimeters a second for the print speed and the initial layer of 15 millimeters a second. Uh, my fan speed, I vary depending on the specific color of the T-glass between 20 and 25 percent for the fan. So for a vase like this, that is 135 millimeters tall. It will use about 19 grams of filament and take just under two hours to print in tea glass. So let's take a look at the final prints for both the first and the second base. Here are the finished pieces after they've been printed. This is base one and this was printed in Zero's marble color which is a off-white with some black and gray specks in it. Here's vase one printed in St. Sparts copper. Uh, there is quite a bit of over extrusion on the base because of the 150 percent extrusion rate, but for the rest of the vase it actually looks quite good and that could be touched up with a bit of filing. So vase two is this and this was printed in tea glass, a red translucent tea glass and this came out looking pretty good. There's a few strings left down in there but those can be pulled out. And then I also did a third vase which is similar to this but I think the overall aesthetic is quite a bit better and this is printed in Zero's translucent green PLA. I usually print the vases with tea glass but after trying it with this Zero Translucent PLA, I think this might be my go-to from now on for vases. That and the marble, because that just looks good. 